Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are talking Alluvium again, and we are talking the open world gameplay. We do have some new leaks that came on the Discord that I want to look at. Also, some old ones that we can have a look at as well of, you know, like characters running through the world. I just want to talk everything about it. I did do a uh, really long interview with both Aaron and Kieran, um, where I dug into these types of topics a bit more. So I wanted to do just a a, a simple video so that someone that's new to Luvium, like, okay, it's an auto battle, but what's the open world like? I just want to do my best to explain what that open world will be like when we jump into the game. Uh, keeping in mind that some of this can change. This is just the best information from what I've been able to obtain from the team. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. And also before we get into this one, I did go really in depth with Aaron in my interview into the combat mechanics for the combat gameplay. So if you want me to make a video going over everything we know so far about combat, let me know and I can make that one as well because I'm just really enjoying the topic in general. I just think Alluvium is going to be huge. So that is me personally. Don't let my bias sway you. I'm very biased towards this game. So this is the new footage that we do have. You can see here um, w when he's traveling down that that up there. That's like one of the um, looks like a the, one of the battle pads basically um, placed in the world. Uh, the way I understand it, it's going to be instant, so I'm not sure if that's going to be actually where you will battle because I'll talk a bit a bit about the instancing of the battles in a minute. But I just want to look at this gameplay because we do get just a base model um, development character put in here, and they do run around and show us what's going on. So as you can see, they. they hit the play button there and we can run around now this is what i've been really excited about is just the, the the vastness of it and the cool thing about this is when we look at this like look at all those animations with like the sand coming down and all that sort of stuff looks really really good and it's incredibly immersive now it shows they put they put a lot of effort and a lot of money into the team that develops the landscapes um i think it's one of the most undervalued things in a game for immersion and i think they've nailed it really really well the amount of detail the amount of leaks they show us about all the different plants they're making all that sort of stuff is amazing but this sort of stuff where you look at the scale of it you feel so small in this little canyon which is absolutely fantastic i i, I just i love the scale of it now when we call this open world the game is going to be open world but it is going to be condensed so you're going to pay a fee or you can free to, free to play travel to um, tiers, to, to some zones and only get tier zero alluvials, but they are going to be little zones and they're not going to be fully like it's not going to be just like an open globe where you can go absolutely anywhere. It is going to be that instance type s scene, but they are still going to be very, very big landscapes. I'm not sure on the exact size. Once I find that out, I will let you know, but they are going to be relatively large. So you'll be able to jump into these places, run around and explore. Now, the thing that I really love about this when we when we look at like how big the mountains are and stuff like that, keep in mind they are going to have mag boots and jetpacks um, in the game. So, you know, you will be able to explore up these places. Now, when I was talking with Aaron as well, um, we were talking about, you know, with the mag boots and jetpack, will they be required to be able to catch any alluvials? At this stage, he said no. He said basically some of the areas that you might need the mag boots and the jetpack to get to, for instance, the top of this mountain, they may have a higher chance of finding some of the alluvials, but it's not like you're going to be excluded out of the way that where you can't actually do that so that's a really cool feature as well i also i also asked him about um you know actually getting there whether you will need it every time he said that they might leave little ways that you know if you're a player who likes to break a game and do what you're not supposed to you might be able to you know find some ledges to hop along and to go ahead and get there but they do also intend this is just some early early gameplay um big shout out to zionic for giving me this i'll leave a link to zionic's youtube channel in the description as well he hooked me up with this when he saw one of my videos where i was talking about it. i think it was with aaron but they will have ways that you can get around. Now, they do intend to make the jetpack and mag boots very accessible and very easy. And what you're seeing here is basically what the open world gameplay is going to be like. You're going to run around and you're going to look for alluvials. Now, the way you're going to find these alluvials isn't going to be like they're roaming around the wild. 
Now, I dug a little into this with Kieran and also Aaron, but for law reasons, they didn't want to go too deep into how the actual um, scenarios of getting into combat with them will work. So I'll touch on that in a, in a, in a second and talk about it. But while we got this screen up, the other you'll be also be able to do some mining, gather resources and all that sort of stuff while you're in these areas. Now, I want to jump here. This is the, uh, I've paused it here and this is the original trailer for the game. Uh, maybe not the very first one, but the trailer that's on the website. And I come here because, like I said, when you're roaming around the world, it won't be that you just see alluvials cruising around. Um, now, there is that deep lore factor that they didn't want to go into, which I respect fully because I hate getting spoiled on lore. And I think the lore in this game is going to be really, really cool. I can probably do another video talking about lore if you guys want, but I'm not overly across it because, like I said, they've been trying to keep it under wraps. We just know a little bit of the basic information. But as you can see here, we've got this little bubble. And now, when you go out in the world, I believe this is what you're going to see. You're going to see these little bubbles, which are like, I, the way I, want, I would explain it would be like a portal to a different dimension. And that's where the battles take place. So when we play this trailer, you can see it expands out. Um, and then once it's fully expanded, we will get into a, a combat scenario um, with the alluvials in this trailer and, and, you know, the way it works. So my understanding is that when you're roaming around that open world, you will just encounter these and you'll see the little bubbles. Now the bubbles will determine, will have like the, 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 the alluvials in them that you can catch. Now, when I spoke earlier about having an energy bar, you know, and you can, you can mine that will use energy. You can go into these encounters and that will use some energy. Now there's also going to be, you're also going to have a scanner. So you'll be able to say, see one of these bubbles instances um, and you'll be able to scan it. And say if you have a hundred energy, it might cost you 10 energy to go into a bubble and get into combat, but it might cost you. And they haven't, we haven't set, they haven't set exact numbers for this. Um, Aaron sort of confirmed that this is the, the, the general idea of what they're going with. But instead of spending 10 um, energy to go into it, you could spend like say three energy and scan it and you would know exactly what's in that bubble before you go in and co into combat. Now, for me, when I look at the open world and the way I would go about playing it, um, I would be looking at the idea of when I'm first getting into the open world gameplay um, and running around, you know, you haven't caught many alluvials, so you'll just go into every encounter you can and catch as many things as you can because you want to fill out your roster. And then once you've got a bit more of a filled out roster, you're trying to fill in the gaps, maybe look for some of those holographic alluvials. That's when you'll start scanning them, use some energy there because then you've got more chances to find the thing you're actually looking for. And if you scan it, you see what you like. Then you've spent three on the scan, you spend 10 on the, uh, the entry. So it actually costs you 13 but at least you know what you're getting so that is the basic gist of the way the the open world gameplay will do it's you you travel to an instance area which is still a very very vast land they're talking about having two main probably two um they're still tossing up the numbers but two main islands um or, or lands that you can go to to go ahead and explore at the launch of the game they will end up having seven by the time you know they they keep adding the lands throughout the the open beta phase of the game but you're going to run around you're going to see these blips you're going to go into them and then that'll start the combat sequence and that's how you can catch the alluvials in there aside from that you can do some mining and you can just do some general exploration so when i was talking earlier about you know some hard to get to places that you might need a jetpack for um you know you can buckle that jetpack up you can get to the top of a hill there might be one of those little blips that's an encounter those encounters might have a slightly higher chance of having say holographics or a ram fire or you know the the rarer alluvials but just because they have a smaller a, a bit of a higher chance it doesn't mean that you're going to get completely left out um if you can't use those things they want the game to be very accessible to everyone um um, and for everyone to be able to enjoy it, which is really nice. So that is going to be the j basic gist of the open world. Obviously, you're going to have your suit. You're going to cruise around with your suit. Um, these will be customizable. Um, they, like Aaron said, he, they're going to aim to have like through the, the land mini game, the Alluvium Zero, um, you might be able to make suits based on, you know, different alluvials. So you can customize your suits and all that sort of stuff. 
like I said, we will have jetpacks. Um, so if we look here, you know, these are some designs that they have done for the jetpacks, which look cool. And then th this was my favorite part because I love the stabilizers on the boots. Um, so, you know, jetpacks will be a really cool thing. Really interested to see how it works um, with that. This is just some landscape that this was the one that we were actually running through just earlier. Um, but this is like a daytime version of it, which is really, really cool. Just some more images to give an idea of that scale, because when you look at this image and you saw we were just running around it, this looks like even a larger scale, which is really, really cool to me. Um, and I'm really excited about that stuff. And then they are working on developing um, the, the, the interface for it. This probably ain't going to be their final rendition, but this is just one that we have seen. Now, the other thing that I did want to mention quickly is when we look over here um, at this one especially, and we and we look at the gameplay through here, they have a very, very, um, you know, very, like the, the, the camera angle is not the greatest, but I think this is more just to demonstrate like from a, like more of a ground up, like the, the aesthetic of the actual overworld um when i spoke to kieran it's still it's still up in the air but i'm assuming they will have different camera settings because for me personally i like having it more of a, a distant camera above and that sort of stuff too especially for an exploration game so that you can see all the blips you can see all the little things that you're looking for but i mean these close-up cameras are a really nice um way to look at the, just the scale of it so i definitely think they'll have customizable camera angles and all that sort of stuff just in case you were looking at that going wow it looks a bit cramped on the camera but that is pretty much all we all i have to go through for the open world gameplay um there's not a hell of a lot of details around it we're, we're still waiting to finalize we do have these obelisks as well which you know you'll be able to find um like and then like the first person to find it this was another cool feature that aaron spoke about is like you know you'll be trying to find these things they may look like a massive scale but you can find out how to activate them and like the first person who finds it um you know they might get recorded as being the first person and they can choose whether they want to share with people how to find it otherwise they can keep it as a secret to themselves and then you know eventually they will have to to tell everyone but um there's a lot of cool things and i'm hoping they add a lot more of just fun interactive things in the open world but like i said i just want to do a summary i don't know how quick it was i hope it wasn't too long of a summary of all the, the all that we do know of the open world i'm really excited for it i'm really i'm really excited just to hang out chill and explore this open world because it just looks beautiful and like i said the amount of effort that's been put into just the landscapes is ridiculous so I'm going to have a lot of fun in this game. Like I said at the start of the video, let me know if you want me to do one covering combat because I feel like I could actually make a much more in-depth video about combat because I, I got we, we got a lot of information out of Aaron in our interview. So let me know if you want to do that one. But hey, I'm just hyped for the game. Pretty excited. Can't hide it. So <laughs> there you go. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I'll look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.